When we read Luke chapter 22, verse 54 from the Bible, it says, Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance, but when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Even Peter, the greatest, most faithful and trustworthy disciple, denied Jesus when he was questioned, Do you know Jesus? Out of fear, Peter answered, I don't know him. This scene contains the will of God. It was Jesus who deemed Peter as the greatest disciple, even though he knew Peter would deny him three times. If you were in Jesus' situation, would you strive to save those who deny you? We should really think about this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Chapter 26 verse 14 says, Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. At that time, this was how the disciples, who claimed to have good faith, denied Jesus. He is our God who came to this earth thinking, I will accept all the agony, suffering and contempt to redeem them from their sin forever. He was even crucified, willingly having his body nailed to the cross, but no one valued his precious sacrifice. When we hear about the twelve disciples, we regard them as people who had great faith. However, one disciple sold Jesus for 30 silver coins, and another disciple, who was known to have the greatest faith, denied Jesus and turned away from him. If a similar situation happened to you in your life, where someone denied, betrayed, and even sold you, would you be able to pray for that soul? Would you strive to save that soul? Would you be able to do all these things that Jesus Christ did for us? His example is the standard we should emulate and the measure by which we can decipher who is more like Christ. Let us continue to read Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. How lonely must Jesus have felt? This is heartbreaking. One disciple denied him. Another disciple sold him for 30 silver coins. Other disciples feared for their lives. Their only concern was for their own safety. So they all fled without heeding to the fact of whether Jesus was caught or not, or if he was dead or alive. Despite all of this, Jesus never abandoned them. He could have rebuked them, saying, You betrayers, you wicked people, is that the level of your faith? How do you expect to enter heaven in this way? After Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day, he appeared to his disciples where they had gathered. Jesus took pity upon them, knowing how feeble and weak humans are. To forgive the sin of denying him even three times, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Let us see the scene when Peter answered Jesus. 
let us turn to John chapter 21. Let us think about our God who came down to this earth in the flesh, even making himself lower than the angels. Let us consider his earnest mind of willingly accepting this sacrificial and humble life with the purpose of only seeking and saving us, his lost children. With a faith that is a true reflection of Christ, who did not hesitate to save our souls by sacrificing himself, we must become the ones who take pity upon our friends, neighbors, and all mankind and can look at what is happening now spiritually. John chapter 21, verse 15 says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. When Jesus said, Simon, son of John, wasn't he referring to Peter? He asked Peter, Do you love me? Do you think that Peter could answer that question immediately? Peter must have felt ashamed and answered Jesus timidly. At one point, Peter said, I will follow you even to the point of death. He even drew a sword and cut off the ear of Malchus, who was the servant of a high priest. He boldly declared his faith with such actions. But later he realized that his faith amounted to nothing. To comfort Peter, Jesus asked him, Do you love me? And he answered, Yes, Lord. Jesus entrusted him with the precious mission by saying, Feed my lambs. Verse 16 says, Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. If you ever have an opportunity to raise sheep, you will understand which people resemble Christ the most. I hope that we can all lead our lost brothers and sisters back to Zion in haste by continuously praying, preaching, and encouraging them with the Word of God. In this way, we can always lead them to the righteous path. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.